Whoa, a new setup. Whoa, what a nice new place. Whoa, hope you like this setup because you gotta get used to it. Because this is my new setup. So a recent post by a local nurse has gone viral the last few days and it was posted on Instagram account The Honest Healthcare Worker An honest healthcare worker trying to make an honest living Hard truths to keep the Singapore healthcare worker going And this was the Instagram post Dear Minister Gun, You mentioned 5 days ago that the healthcare system was coping well and urged Singaporeans not to worry I appreciate that on occasion you face tremendous pressure from assuring Singaporeans that we need not panic But respectfully sir, it is not coping well It is on a slow road to collapse So this open letter is a response to Minister Gun's evaluation of the state of Singapore's healthcare system on the 16th of February. This clip from a recent press conference was what the Instagram post is referring to. Overall, our healthcare system remains stable and has been able to cope with the uh, infections. And it seems like from this Instagram post, some of our frontline ground forces of the healthcare system didn't concur with this evaluation by Minister Gai. Nurses are certainly not coping well. Their numbers have declined sharply as many have left. The nurse to patient ratio has increased from 1 to 6 to 1 to 12 or more. What? One nurse to 12 patients. Can you imagine that? I mean, that sounds like a lot. I mean, one nurse to six patients already sounds tiring, but one to 12, that just sounds absurd. <laughs> but then again, I really have no frame of reference here to compare because I'm not in the healthcare sector and this is totally not my field. But if there are any healthcare workers, do let us know if this is like, is, is it bad? Is this an absurd number? I, I would imagine so, right? Like, what is the standard? They are being called back from off days because more staff are getting COVID. Some of them have not taken leave in a year. And now, their off days and rest days are being further restricted by management. Coping well? If so, why did the ministry just issue an urgent call for volunteers to supplement a severe crunch on nursing manpower? It is no surprise that many more of my esteemed colleagues are preparing to leave. I wouldn't be surprised that after this COVID wave passes, if ever, we'll be seeing a huge drop-off of healthcare workers. I mean, we're already seeing it right now, right? But I totally understand why as a frontline worker, you would fuck right off this sector because of how overworked our healthcare workers are. Or at least it appears they are. And I say that because I don't personally know of any nurses working in COVID wards. I can only infer from online sources. But there has been multiple news reports of the growing number of healthcare workers resigning in Singapore. I mean, most of y'all have already seen it. It's no, it's no big news. More doctors have quit residency. Allied health professionals are leaving at an alarming rate. Those that are left over our juniors who lack experience and are tasked to see complex cases. It is a downward spiral that has been constantly accelerated by poor management decisions. How can any of this fit the definition of coping well? I fear for patients in public health care today. So it seems that even doctors are leaving the sector. I mean, if that's not a telling sign that the sector is not doing too well, I don't know what is. Even our doctors who are supposedly the officers in this war on COVID are wavering and surrendering. So how do you expect our nurses to continue fighting this battle? Online sources from Channel News Asia reported about 1,500 healthcare workers workers resigned in the first half of 2021 compared to about 2,000 annually pre-pandemic. That's almost twice the turnover rate in a year which is honestly quite worrying. Respectfully sir, your comments are out of touch with the reality on the ground. Our working conditions have worsened significantly and yet there has been no change to our remuneration or increase in practical support. And yet we are expected to tolerate endless leave restrictions while the rest of Singapore flies around the world for their vacations. I think not. I think not. You, you stupid vacation taking Singaporeans and little pieces of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to Bali? You, you're going to Bali while I work my ass off in the healthcare industry? No! Okay, got a little bit too heated there. <laughs> but I do empathize with this statement. I mean, it's obviously not going to be a good feeling when here you are, you know, working your ass off, protecting Singapore from COVID, while the rest of Singapore just, you know, flies along their merry way. Oh, going to Bali. Oh, oh, traveling. Yay, having the time of their lives. So I totally get it. All we are asking for is frank honesty and support. It is the least we deserve for the literal blood, sweat and tears that we have given in the service of our nation. Respectfully yours, the honest healthcare worker. Yeah, I think it's not fair to paint a rose-tinted image of the current state of the healthcare industry. Yeah, especially during these trying times. The reason people are so upset is because the government isn't portraying things as it is. Perhaps it is a careless overlook, but it's quite common for public officials to add saturation to what is evidently a dull picture most of the time. Don't get me wrong though, I'm not trying to lead a revolution against the Singapore government. I am actually a patriot and I fucking love Singapore. <laughs> but it's only right to report the truth, right? Instead of slathering makeup to an already ugly image. And I really feel for our ground workers. It's like they signed up for a 2.4 kilometer run, right? And then it ended up being a whole ass triathlon with a full ninja warrior course that never ends. There were of course many people who offered solutions to this problem, albeit not without the usual Singaporean snarkiness. Everyone can be bought. Just increase the healthcare worker salaries to three or four times whatever they receive now. And they'll gladly ride through the COVID store. And I'm pretty sure there'll be lots more people applying to work in 
in that industry. I'm pretty sure I'll join that industry too. It seems like whenever there's a public issue, people just suddenly get enlightened by God with the perfect solution to lead a country. You know, just like that one friend who suddenly becomes a doctor when he finds out you have COVID. I don't think increasing salaries by four folds is a very sustainable um, solution. I, th I think, I think again, I am not a politician, so I, th this is just personal opinion. But I don't disagree to better remuneration for healthcare workers. However, I think this issue goes way beyond just handing out money to frontline staff, right? To be honest, I don't think remuneration is the key point. Everyone is so overworked. You can double their pay and they would still quit. Better manpower allocation for staff to actually have some breaks during the workday. More rest, less hours, rather than trying to cram as many patients as possible into the calendar. Perhaps this might be a better solution. I think what our healthcare workers need the most is rest and time to spend with their family and friends. Um, again, I am no politician and I am definitely not qualified to give solutions. Just saying what I feel is, is perhaps doable, feasible. But it does make sense to divert manpower or money to alleviate the stress in the sector, right? I don't know, I'm just a dumb YouTuber, but um, do let me know what you guys think. And thank you to all our healthcare workers for fighting this battle and protecting us. I know a virtual hand clap and pat on the back isn't enough to, you know, support you guys. But I guess the best thing I can do is, is raise awareness, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but really, thank you for keeping us safe. And also, if you are a patient or you have relatives who are patients at a hospital, please exercise patience and courtesy when talking to our frontline staff. I mean, they're already so stressed and overworked. They don't need to deal with your whiny ass demanding them to serve you. So please, please bear with them and, you know, you know, cut them some slack. Like, come on, don't, don't be a fucking asshole. Don't be a dick. Or at least tell your boomer grandmother to stop being a little bitch and chill. Chill the fuck out, okay? Be patient. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thanks for watching and I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. All right, you guys already know what a VPN is. It basically protects your online activity by masking your IP address. But sushi, why do I need this added protection? Well, first of all, having a VPN lets you access sites that are currently blocked in your country. And if you're like me and you like to keep your online activity private, you might find a VPN useful to mask your digital footprint. Because no matter what site you visit, your internet provider, like Singtel, can view all the sites that you visit. ExpressVPN reroutes all your traffic through their encrypted server so they can't see a thing. ExpressVPN is fast and super easy to use. And all you have to do is select the country that you want your connection to be routed to and you're all set. What's more, you can use ExpressVPN on every major platform on five devices simultaneously just by using one single subscription so all your devices can be protected. Wow, that's amazing and so cost effective. Right now you can get three extra months of ExpressVPN for free by going to expressvpn.com forward slash sneaky sushi. So get protected today with ExpressVPN and thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. Don't be a dick.